Hello, nation. This is Dr. Steve Edelman. I don't usually introduce myself, but uh, you, maybe you don't recognize me. I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Dr. Jody Stanislaw, and today we're going to talk about boosting the immune system. And I'll let Jody do her own intro right now. Thanks, Jody. Great. Great. Thanks so much for having me here. Um, so, so, Steve, before I go into who I am, though, I'm just curious. You're, you're by yourself right now, aren't you? Yes, I'm in the TCOID office, which is totally empty. Okay, so can I ask you why you're, why are you wearing the mask? <laughs> you know what? I one reason I asked you to be on the show. I'm, I'm kind of ignorant about this whole immunity thing, and my IT guy called me today because my computer was acting up. He said I had a, I had a virus in my computer, so it's scary. <laughs> well, I understand, Steve. It's a very scary time, but I would like to to assure you that. You can't get sick from the virus on your computer. That's a different kind of virus. It's it's really it's not going to hurt your health. You can you can you can safely take your mask off while we talk. <laughs> Thank you, Jody. Um, tell the group something about yourself, and then then just continue into a description of our what is what is our immune system. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so yes, thank you. Um, thanks for having me. I'm so excited. I love all your videos. I feel honored to be a part. I've had type one for 40 years and I decided that I wanted to go to med school and I went to a holistic medical school in Seattle. I have a doctorate in holistic medicine. And um, then I became a CDE because I thought that was important. And now I've been working virtually with type ones for almost 10 years. So it's very exciting. People are interviewing me also about how to do a telemedicine practice, but um Today, I wanted to really inspire patients that we, there's a lot we can do to keep our immune system strong because, you know, we're thrown into this bucket of everybody with diabetes is at higher risk. And I know you agree with me because I saw your video that that's not always necessarily true. We've got to take it deeper than that. Um, so what I want to cover today is how we can keep our immune system strong and also empower you to not freak out and feel like just because you have diabetes it's, you know, you're, you need to hide in a ball and, you know, <laughs> with a fear. Like, that's not what we're about here. Fear actually is weak, weakening to your immune system. So You're so right. And um, I was just speaking to a clinical psychology friend of mine, Bill Polonsky, and fear is not good, but you have to break down what are you fearful of. If yeah. you're fearful of your mother dying, then talk about ways to prevent that and it does take away fear. Fear is not good. You're right. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, fear and worry are like a rocking chair, right? They give you something to do, but you don't get anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So the first thing, go ahead. No, go for it. What, what is the immune system? I know it's supposed to prevent us from getting sick, but give us a little deeper than that. Yeah, sure. Well, it's, it's a collection of organs and cells and tissue throughout the body. We have an incredible army uh, we have the thymus, we've got the spleen, we've got cells like macrophages, lymphocytes. Um, you even have immune system tissue in your in your GI tract, in your bone marrow. So we're very well equipped to fight infections. And you can actually look on your recent lab work and to see, you know, your white blood cell count, um, your immunoglobulin count. Immunoglobulins are proteins that fight infection. And you can see literally on a lab, you know, how strong your immune system is. But if you don't, you can also just, you know, are you somebody that's always getting sick, right? That obviously is a weak immune system. So there are absolutely things that we can do to keep it strong. And of course, now is, is more important than ever. And those of us with type one, the number one most important thing, which could be a whole nother interview in itself, of course, is getting good blood sugar levels. That is absolutely the determining fact between a, a diet, I don't like to say the word diabetic, but a person with diabetes that is very um, weak, has a weak immune system versus a person with diabetes with a strong immune system. If you have an A1C of, you know, five, six, something like that, you're doing, you know, your immune system is not being hampered by diabetes, well, assuming you have a good Include average. seven in there too. Uh, seven, seven, right. And, and then above eight, nine, ten, that's going to be really damaging and inflammatory to the immune system. Yeah. So... Jody, the one thing, uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, the one thing I wanted to put in my video on are we folks with diabetes at risk, I forgot to mention, and I wanted to, that there is a very strong body of literature that once the blood sugars go above 200, 
uh, you start measuring the function of the immune system, the phagocytes, the white blood cells, they're all diminished. And so that's why I said, if your control is no good, uh, you, you're at risk for not only the virus, but any type of infection. And for those of, you, for those of you that are freaking out because your A1C has not been good, you know, don't freak out. Now's a good time to stay home, be extra vigilant, and work on your diabetes control. Yes. And this whole video is, I'm going to go into things that you can do right now, right? The immune system isn't, isn't yay, you're good or bad. There's many different levels. There's many different variables. Blood sugar is just one. It's a major one, but I want to go into all the other things that we can do right now today to improve it. Go for it. Okay. So when I work with patients, I also, I always start with what I call the four pillars of health. These are the most important areas of your health that I don't care how great your blood sugar levels are. If these four areas are a mess, your immune system is going to be a mess. And so the first one is basically what are you eating, right? There are foods that actually boost the immune system and there's foods that weaken the immune system. So obviously weakening the immune system are foods that are processed, high sugar, you know, things that are quite obviously unhealthy for you. Nothing, those are not going to boost the immune system. Um, a healthy whole foods diet is going to be great for the immune system. And because because I'm a naturopath, people are always asking me, what supplement should I take? What supplement should I take? And the first thing I always say is, what foods are you eating? Because the best way to get supplements and vitamins is through your food. So there's certain foods that are really high. I made a list, um, you know, bell peppers, citrus fruits, tomatoes. Those are all high in vitamin C. Um, broccoli, spinach, all the green vegetables, garlic and onions. Those are great. Blueberries, low glycemic, one of my favorite fruits. And um, bell peppers, especially red bell peppers, very high in vitamin C. So there's a lot of foods that you can actually eat to boost your immune system. So that's always my first step. Pillar number one, food. And then, um, of can course. We, can I ask yes. a quick question? Now, yeah. you know, we had emailed and talked about supplements. And I'm always very cautious about a lot of promises of supplements. But I've heard you say vitamin C is a good thing to take, and that's the foods you're suggesting that are rich in vitamin C. So, I, would, I would much rather you increase your vitamin C foods than take vitamin C pills, for sure. That's such practical advice. I really love that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hippocrates, the father of medicine, he said, let medicine be your food and food be your medicine. So that's where I go. Okay, pillar number two is obviously sleep. And if you're at home, you have no excuse why you can't go to sleep at 10 o'clock. <laughs> especially now when we're all at home that's that's right so sleep is so good it's when our bodies replenish it, it you know it recharges all of our cells we all know how we don't feel well when we don't get good sleep well guess what your cells are feeling the same way when you wake up and you feel great your immune system cells wake up and feel great but if you're staying up and eight hours of sleep starting at 10 is actually much more restorative than eight hours of sleep starting at like noon or one. So you got to get those, you know, get seven to nine hours and ideally before 10. So that's a good one. Okay. Okay. Uh, step number three, no surprise, exercise. But, you know, you can, you can run up and down your stairs. You can walk your dog 20 times. You can garden. You can, you know, do some YouTube videos. But absolutely mobilizes T-cells, absolutely strengthens your immune system. And we all certainly know it takes better care of our blood sugar. So yeah. doing some sit-ups, push-ups, whatever you got, do it. <laughs> I was going to say that, uh, not, not bad. Um, I was going to say that um, I encourage my patients and friends now to try to get outside and get some fresh air. Yeah. And because I think that's very helpful too. And even going with a walk for a, with a friend or a family member, uh, or if, if it's a friend that you're not quarantined with, just stay six feet apart. And uh, yeah. the, I think the fresh air is key. And even if you live in a small apartment, whatever you can do, try to get some fresh air, uh, open your windows and things like that. So exercise has always been important. It's, it's one of our most powerful medicines. When people say, what do you prescribe? You're a naturopath. What do you prescribe? I'm like, I prescribe exercise. I prescribe blueberries and I prescribe sleep because they're more powerful than anything I can prescribe. <laughs> you know what? I, I, like, once again, I can't say this enough. I really like your practical advice versus um, I have met other naturopaths that just go with thousands of bottles of supplement. Uh, no, you know, so no disrespect to your profession, but sometimes I think they give you guys a bad name to be frank. Yeah, I, I, I totally get it. 
Absolutely. And it's, you know, you can take all the pills in the world, but if you don't have these four pillars down, don't bother. <laughs> okay. What's last? Okay. The, the next one is the fourth pillar and that is your emotional health. So emotional health, right? We're laughing. Laughing brings more oxygen into your lungs. It actually you know, it can lower your blood sugar because it lowers your stress. Laughter is good. We want to relax. You know, I took a two hour nap yesterday in the afternoon. It was fabulous. You know, I want you guys to connect with your friends, maybe get some paper and write a letter and put a stamp on it. Do you yeah. guys know how to do that? Anybody? What a letter? <laughs> What's that? Uh, <laughs> you know what? My girlfriend, she doesn't believe in naps, but I think it's one of the life's greatest pleasures. Oh. Take, a, take a nap when you're tired in the afternoon. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm all for it. So anything to do to keep your spirits high, right? Watch some funny videos. You know, Steve's videos are hilarious. <laughs> um, Thank you. And be inspired by this. So before this whole thing happened, I was actually on a you know, year-long mission to prove that we with type 1 can live long and adventurous lives. And I was traveling to a different country every month for six months. So you can check out my YouTube channel if you want to be inspired. I lived for a month in six different countries, um, Croatia, Lisbon, Valencia, Spain, Cape Town, Hanoi, Vietnam, and India. I also rode a camel in the Sahara Desert. I went to Dubai. I did great stuff. So I think my videos are kind of inspiring. So if you want to be inspired, you can check out my videos. Um, but now is the time to not, We, you know, Wayne Dyer, who's been a spiritual teacher forever and until he passed away, and he is one of my all-time favorite gurus, but he said, he would always say, there's no level of my fear or depression that will help me or anybody else. And so sometimes I've had patients this week tell me they feel guilty because they feel great and they're in a good mood and they're enjoying being home, but they feel bad that they're in a good mood. And I release all of you from having any guilt from being in a good mood. <laughs> it doesn't help anybody. Well, Jody, um, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to do this video. It's going to help a lot of people. We're going to yeah. shove it out to a million people, and we will put your correct spelling of your name and your website uh, right, right below the frame. So once again, right. so long, Nation, and thanks a lot, Jody. You bet. Thank you.